Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AMP TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged USDA Prime Angus and Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you try their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignon, and of course, the king of all, those massive cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Best I've ever had. Probably be the best you've ever had as well. Also, they have those massive burgers, those half-pound burgers, Wagyu Prime. Everything is USDA Prime. Not choice like those other organizations. No, it's Prime. That means it's the best in the business. Folks, check them out at uppercutchops.com. That's uppercutchops.com. Or give them a call and find out what's for dinner. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935 for uppercutchops.com. All right, a big welcome in to everybody listening in and watching on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Right here in Las Vegas, Jackpot Radio, 90.1 FM, KHKA over in Honolulu, CBS Sports, 1500, as well as our friends over in Atlanta, WAUD, home of the Atlanta Braves, and everybody else maybe in, oh, South Florida, WBGY, and everywhere else. I just can't do this all day because guess what? We'll go right to commercial break. Also, welcome to everybody on Cox Comcast Spectrum Frontier, while cable television and Time Warner as well as hotel TV in about 600,000 rooms from coast to coast, right from the very top. We have a very special guest. In fact, we're going to let him introduce himself. I'm Dwayne Clemens, former Kansas City Chiefs, Bengals, and uh, Minnesota Viking. All right. That's the guy. He's got that, got that Bengals hat up there, got that Vikings hat, and this is a very large human, folks. If you don't know who he is, you better start looking him up. And remember, he's the guy that cannot hide under a rock and you can't hide him behind other players because he is one of those guys. You actually walk among him. You don't walk with him. All right, Dwayne, welcome <laughs> into the show. <laughs> See, you're wearing that alumni shirt. All right, it's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Got to support my organization since, you know, I'm always going to be a former player. That's right. That's right. Okay, so for everybody that doesn't know who you are for some reason, give everybody about the 30-second rundown on yourself. All right, uh, 96 first round draft pick to the Minnesota Vikings, 16th overall. Four years with the with the Vikings, uh, three years with the Kansas City Chiefs, and then my last three years with the Cincinnati Bengals. And now I'm retired, living in uh, Maryland. Living in Maryland. All right. Why did you select Maryland? Is that just something that um, just kind of came? My, my up? wife's from Baltimore, and you know her mom was struggling, so we came back here to kind of help her out. All right, all right, that's good stuff. So. So a good family guy. All right, you like to have kids? Uh, yeah, well, they're grown, but I have a 30-year-old, a 25-year-old, and a 24-year-old. A 30-year-old? You look like you're 30, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> you better strap Thank him back you. on. Come on, man. I mean, look. I wish I was that. Wish I was still that young. <laughs> right. Like, look at all that gray, man. I got all that gray. I can't hide my age. Hell no. <laughs> that means my 21 is really showing. If you know what I mean. Absolutely. Well, I just turned 49, May 23rd, so I'm knocking on 50. <laughs> All right. Well, guess what? You're halfway to what are you? You're halfway to 98. Look at it that way. Hey, yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Listen, Dwayne, have you ever been to this event right there, the Ditkin Jaws Cigars with the Stars event? I believe so. Yeah, I think I went when it was at uh, one of the Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. I I go to those. I handle the uh, red carpet coverage this year for the gridiron greats and it was kind of cool that was mike Dick's oh, yeah. group and actually uh, erlacher is the one that that stood in this year and i think erlacher is going to take over for that what do you think of brian did you ever play against brian oh he's a great player great player i didn't i didn't know him personally but uh definitely knew about him and saw his career yeah i mean brian's a, he's, you know what i like is that a lot of the guys that i'll talk to from whether it's football baseball basketball hockey whatever the football guys are the easiest ones to talk to for whatever reason, the most difficult ones are the baseball guys to talk to. Not really sure why that is, but it seems like the football guys will get really into the trenches and talk about what's really going on. And, you know, by the way, I see that Bengals hat up on your mantle there or up on your shelf. How could we only have four guys in the league from the Bengals in the Hall of Fame? 
it's a crime, man. I, I thought maybe there was some kind of curse that got put on him, and and now no other Bengals can get in. But I think Anthony Munoz was probably the last guy that got in. Right. Well, what about guys like Corey Dillon? Doesn't he belong in there? Absolutely. Willie Anderson. What about Kenny and Anderson? I, 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 Kenny Anderson. Takeo Spikes has an argument. I think uh, um, Chad Johnson has an argument. But, you know, it seems like those guys can't even get – and I definitely think Justin Smith has an argument. Right. Yeah, there are so many really good players that came out. I mean, look, the organization's been around since 1967. They can only only muster up four. My hometown, That's crazy. my hometown, horrific nowadays. Chicago Bears have 37 guys in the hall, but they've been around for 102 years. But still, even if you divide that in two, and let's just say it's 51. That would mean mm-hmm. they'd have, you know, 15 players, 17, 16 players, whatever. You well, can't, I it doesn't explain six, the four. I played with six Hall of Famers on the on the, on the the Vikings that I actually played with. And even with the with the Chiefs, I think we'll see Tony Gonzalez, Will Shields, Willie Rofe. We, you had, know, real, I, we I had Willie Rofe on the show. With. We brought yeah. Willie Rofe on. Willie was a great guy. Really is a weird guy. So it's crazy to think that I played with seven Hall of Famers on the other team, and all that time we can't get one guy voted on for the Bengals? Why is that? I want to know, what do you really believe is the issue with this? I mean, I, I kind of feel like there's got to be some bad blood, you know, at a high level. You know, I don't know if the owners get together and, you know, everybody talks about collusion, but it, it, it kind of feels like there's, there's, some, there's some collusion against the guys that play for the Bengals and they just can't get a nod. Okay. If they can't get a nod, that means there might be something going on there and maybe there's that bias. I mean, come on, look at the old Bengals hat, right? It's just yeah. like that Cleveland Browns hat, but just with Bengals across it. You know the story behind that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell everybody that doesn't know about it. You talking about like Paul Brown and leaving Cleveland and buying the, buying the team and basically just kind of copycatted it and, and just they just slapped the Bengals on it, but it was pretty much the same colors, same same uniforms, just just the Bengal stripe. That's the one, because a lot of people don't know that. Why is that? Because the Bengals weren't a popular team, especially, you know, we had uh, we had some really bad years, especially in those 90s. And I think, what was, I think the year before I got there, I think they went 1-15. Yeah. So I was on the first Bengals team that actually had a, a winning record in, like, I don't know, 20 years or something crazy when, when Marvin came in. Okay. So let's go back to this Hall of Fame thing. And let me ask you this. There are guys that I personally know that have – a lot less sacks than you do. You have 49 and a half from last I saw, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're in the hall. Yes, they've got a ring, but remember, that's a team effort. As an individual, let's face it, for the most, your playing time. I remember watching you out there. For your playing time, you made the most of it. And let's face it, a long career, 49 and a half sacks. Why is it that some guys with significantly less get in because they're on a different team when the hall is not, you're, you're not inducting the team into the hall of fame. You're inducting the player into the hall of fame. So isn't it, shouldn't it be considered that the most efficient players are actually inducted right or wrong? Right. But unfortunately, you know, winning, winning, winning pushes you over the top. So if there's three or four guys sitting there and you guys all got similar stats and one guy got some renting, pretty much he's going to go and everybody else is going to sit. That's a bunch of crap. I mean, think about all these really bad teams that are out there with great players. If that's the case, I mean, look, Deion Sanders said something uh, recently. Well, not really recently, but <clears throat> I think he said this on several occasions that they're letting everybody into the hall. Well, not if you're in Cincinnati. <laughs> exactly. Nobody in Cincinnati seems to, to to have a chance to get in, no matter how good their stats are. And I know with Willie Anderson, I know his stats are like second to none. I mean, I, I don't think there's too many guys that are in the hall that have stats as good as his. Right. Well, as I look at it, I mean, look, I think somebody needs to pay a visit over to Ohio and tell them, hey, listen, you've got this whole thing wrong. And, and I just want to know one thing here in our last 30 seconds of the segment. Why is it... 
that we have writers in this voting. Don't you think it should be players and coaches and this kind of thing? Is that fair? It's not fair. I've never understood why guys that never cross that white line get to have a vote. Yeah, that would be like me getting a vote. I never played on that field. I played on a baseball diamond, but I've never played football. I don't know what it's like to get in there and crunch the bones. I think the players on the coaches and maybe the ownership, well, I don't know, that's maybe questionable. But nonetheless, the players and coaches should be the ones, in my opinion, to make that vote. Absolutely, I agree 100%. Yeah, I guess the bigger question is, what can we do to change that? And who knows, maybe in between segments we'll talk about that. We're going to be back here with the great Dwayne Clemens in just a few minutes on the Sports Circus. Lots more to come. This is a very large human, folks. You don't want to miss this one. Back here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949-445-1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Hi, welcome back. I'm Dwayne Clemens, and you're here with the Ringmaster Sal. 
All right, nice round of applause. It's the Kung Fu applause, a little delayed applause, right? We kind of like that. <laughs> Ever watch those Kung Fu movies? That's the best. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, those are great. So they'll be like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Three seconds later. <laughs> I know. Those are great. All right. All right, the great Dwayne Clemens here. Folks, in case, uh, like I said, you've been living under a rock, this is a very large human. And by the way, first round draft pick, Vikings for a few, Chiefs for a few, Bengals for a few. And you know what? I see a little something for the Toronto Argonauts as well. What was that all about? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I just paused for a second. I thought about playing one more year and then went up there for like a week or two, but nothing nothing came of it. I, it was too Bush League. I went on quick. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you this. About the football field size, the dimensions, the difference, what do you think about the dimensions, first of all, versus the NFL? I mean, it's kind of – I mean, it's crazy having such a long field and – you know, especially for a D lineman, you know, I want a shortest field as possible. I don't like to run, so you know, I didn't need an extra twenty yards. <laughs> right. It's like playing in a in a phone booth versus playing, you know, in a backyard, right? Oh yeah. But what about the rules? Because the rules are a little bit different too. Well, I never actually played in a game. I think I was there for like a week and I went to a game and then I pretty much told him I was going home. <laughs> like, cause I, I knew it wasn't for me. I, when I saw it, it was just so Bush League. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so as a defensive lineman, as a defensive end, you think about your goal, go get the ball, right? Get the guy yeah. with the ball. It's, it's the old game on the playground, kill the guy with the ball. Remember those? Oh, right? yeah. So you just kind of grew up and got paid to play kill the guy with the ball, which I think is fantastic. But what about the rules as far as you know, you can't hit anybody. You can't do this. You can't do that. I had a great conversation on the show with Kevin Green. You remember Kevin? Rest his soul. Oh, Kevin, yeah. Kevin's a wonderful guy. And he really, really was candid in how he felt about playing this game. And it was still today, this has been years since he's been on. But it's been soundbite after soundbite. And Kevin was one of those guys that liked to play like the backyard game. If somebody was popping off on the field, hold him up so everybody can hit him. Were you playing the same Absolutely. game? Absolutely. I mean, we played we we played for blood when I played. That's what we called it. You know, it was no it wasn't no nice guy. We didn't shake hands. We didn't dust people out. No, we tried to knock your t teeth out your mouth and leave you in the dirt. Kick maybe kick you in the face while you were still on the ground. That was just who we were. But that's what we did on the playground too. We weren't helping guys up. We were drilling them. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. But unfortunately, yeah. they're gonna take your whole paycheck nowadays if you do that. Why is that? Why are we playing such a soft game in the NFL? Well, I mean, the money's gotten too big, so obviously things... And, and you know, I mean, I, I'm not upset that guys aren't getting hurt as much, but at the same time, I don't think you should call a penalty every time you touch the quarterback. It's, it's just ridiculous. Well, I think it's like, ridiculous. There's got to be some happy medium. Okay, out of the 49 and a half sacks, Dwayne, who did you just love putting a hat into it's okay you're not playing right now you can tell me i won't Ooh. tell anybody let's see well i loved hitting brady brady was my one of my favorites because he always cried um <laughs> i got steve mcnair really good but it wasn't personal oh uh, doug flutie pissed me off one game and i said i know i gave him a concussion oh well you know now he's selling that stuff on tv i don't know we see him all the time so apparently he's doing okay Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah. You, as maybe you could have drilled them just a little bit harder the next time. And so, <laughs> and so out of the quarterbacks out there, did you talk to them a lot? Did you try to get up in their head? No, I wasn't a big talker. I, you know, I played with John Randall, so that was kind of his thing. You know, it was like, when you stand next to John, what are you going to say? So like he, just said, he just said 10 times more than anybody could say. So <laughs> I, I just <laughs> quietly went about hitting people as hard as I could. But that must have been great to line up in the same, right on the same line and, and get out there. It's like, Absolutely. hey, look, you know, if you don't get them, I'm going to get them. Oh, man, I was I played with some NFL guys. I mean, I, I got to line up with Chris Doman and John Randall. I mean, I, I don't think he gets any bigger than that, you know. And that's another reason that it's hard to make the Hall of Fame when you got John Randall and Chris Doman on your D-line. You, yeah. you, you're not getting any votes. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, but the other clubs. Remember in the first segment we talked about the Bengals, but obviously we see some guys in the Hall of the Chiefs. Yep, yep. Um, a couple of guys, obviously we had a couple of guys at the Chiefs. But I don't know, I, I, like I said, the Bengals, I, I feel like there's something going on behind the scenes. Maybe 20, 30 years ago, somebody said something, did something. 
and they've never been able to quite get that lived down as an organization, and the players suffer for it. Well, you know, with the squad they got out there today, I think they're going to see maybe one or two guys just because, right? And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying any names, but it just seems that if they take the collective team effort, kind of like what's going on in Buffalo, you've got a pretty complete team in Buffalo, largely speaking. I think that's fair to say, right? You'll probably see maybe a couple of those guys in there as well. But when you look to the past, go back to the, the, the freezing cold game with the Bengals and the Chargers, Right. There were some guys on that field that certainly belong in there. But looking forward, you say, well, wait a minute. How can I input in this? Do you get a say in any of this voting or can you work your way into a position? Because you have done some television work technically right on air, but you've also been mm-hmm. on the field. I think your opinion kind of matters. I mean, I'd like to think it does, but the only thing I can do is like talk to people in back rooms, like, you know, just like how we're doing it now. I, I, I'm on a couple of chats with my, my, my former Chiefs and my former Bengals, and we talk about all this all the time. But unfortunately, those guys in the media pretty much got all the votes and, and they get to make the decisions. And I don't know who decided that they were the, the decision makers, but, you know, unfortunately, we, we have no control over the Hall of Fame. Right. We have to make up our own Hall Right. Yeah. I, th- I, think that's, I think you're right about that. And you know what? There's also a lot of players from all these different schools. They don't get looks either. All right. So one of the guys that comes on on a regular basis for years now, he's been doing this is Tyrone Poole. So Tyrone been with us for quite some time. And Tyrone and I go back and forth about this a lot. We talk about, well, wait a minute. How can we have a lot of guys in the hall that went to the HBCUs, but we don't see them getting drafted? What's wrong with right. this picture? Well, we, we, we already know that there's a, this is America, so, you know, a lot of things ain't changed. Buddy, you can speak freely here. Just keep, keep it clean. <laughs> I don't care because I want people to get shaken up a little bit because people don't oh, yeah. listen to this because, oh, it's a PG or G-rated show. Yeah, we get all that. But, look, it's all about, you know, giving somebody a punch in the face and saying, oh, how'd you like that? How would you like another one? This kind of thing, because I want people to say, look, this was good content, not this garbage that they get mainstream on pick your favorite channel or whatever. I don't give a damn about that. And if you don't like it, folks, turn it off, because guess what? If you turn the channel, chances are I'm over there, too, if you know what I mean. (laughs) So So you can't escape me. But look, I know that we don't get we don't really see the drafting for the HBCU players and we see a league that is focused on power five. I mean, you're a power five guy. I'm a power five guy, right? I get it. But at the same time, you get great players out of schools of all sizes too. The money and the media is all focused on, on, on those top five, top 10, you know, D one schools. They're not going to spread that light. And, and, you know, and the bottom line is they're not trying to shine a light on HBCUs. They're not, who's incentivizing that? They're not making money off of there. So until those schools can basically find a way to monetize their, those, those players that they're putting out, they're never going to be able to get the same shine as Alabama and Tennessee and some of those other bigger schools and Georgia and all that. Right, which to me, it's sort of a conundrum because when you look at the talent pool of where the players come from, these are the same kids on the same playgrounds playing the same damn game, right? Some are getting looks, some aren't getting looks. And I got to tell you, folks, hey, look, I'm an academic recruiter for one of America's top universities, academic. And I will tell you, that some of the smart schools that are out there, the alleged smart schools aren't very smart, and some of the alleged dumb schools aren't very dumb. So now we take that out of the equation and say, look, we've got a player that is that has the capability of playing at a high level, and this kid is going to do good at school X, Y, and Z. Why don't we give that school or that kid a look, or those kids that are going to the schools a better look? Because they're not. Because they don't just, want to validate them. Right, just because they're going to Alabama doesn't mean they're all going to be great. Just because they're going to Ohio State doesn't mean they're all going to get paid, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, because, hey, listen, you know, it's, it's just that way. I'm sorry, but I, I feel that Ohio State with a ridiculous budget, look, they've been play, paying players for a very, very long time. And that also goes into basketball. Yes, John Wooden, way back in the day, I know two guys that played for John Wooden, and they both got paid through the system through John Wooden's team. They just didn't do any recruiting violations or whatnot back then because it was unheard of, right? So 
Now you got to focus, but now you have this name, image, and likeness money. In fact, in the next segment, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about the NIL money because I scratched my head with some of this because all they've done technically is they've taken the booster money and basically legalized it, right? And ironically, the mm -hmm. booster money is where the NIL money has to come from and the university takes their cut. It's just like the bookmaker in the local, in the neighborhood. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, they shouldn't be getting any of that. <sighs> Buddy, they shouldn't get a lick of that. And I, I just scratched my head. I'm like, I can't believe this. Here you've got a very tilted system. And they say, okay, we want these players. And guess what? You could pay them and we're going to take our cut as well. Give me your final thoughts on that before we go to break. I mean, it's a... Uh... It's been going on for too long. You know, we got absolutely nothing. So at least these kids are getting something. But it's always going to be a racket. They're taking advantage of these kids' talent and they're using it to make money. And they can say they give people scholarships, but that ain't what they're doing. They ain't giving nobody nothing. You yeah. working a full-time job and you're not getting paid for it. So That's right. All right, back here in just a few minutes on the Sports Circus with Dwayne Clements. Large human hits quarterbacks, especially guys like Tom Brady. Loves that. Back here in just a few minutes on The Circus. Don't go anywhere. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you'd get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize. There's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has the Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Super think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, 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 for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and boy, when a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you you sing about Cracker Jack. I said that I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? Ah, can't beat fun at the old ballpark, friends. Hi, pop fly. That wouldn't be a home run in a phone booth. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average and best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Hey everybody, this is Barry Katz from the Industry Standard Podcast, and you're listening to the Sports Circus with Sal Tuzzolino. Hello, 
world. I'm Dwayne Clemens here with the Ringmaster Sal. This segment is brought to you by Urbana Spine and Wellness out here in Urbana, Maryland. If you have any back problems or if you need spinal decompression for your discs or herniations, come see us. You can look at us for at UrbanaSpineAndWellness.com. All right, Dwayne. Thanks for bringing us back. I'm your Ringmaster Sal here. In fabulous Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio. Welcome back also to everybody on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast. Of course, Jackpot Radio right here in Las Vegas on KVGK 97.9 FM, as well as all of our other affiliates from South Florida to Honolulu to Atlanta and a whole bunch of points in between. Thanks for joining us today. And also Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and Wow Cable and Hotel Television in over 600,000 rooms gaining about 4 million impressions per hour. Also, a big welcome in to everybody watching on YouTube as well. Nice round of applause for you. We don't really do this very often on YouTube, but guess what? We're doing it today. And Dwayne, by the way, do you have any social media that you want to get out there as well? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really not that active, but, you know, my I don't even know my Instagram. I know I'm RushmanCoach92 on one Instagram handle. I, I forget my Facebook. I think it's just Dwayne under slash Dwayne Clemens. All right. And that's probably all I got. All right. That's good stuff. And you always get a round of applause just because we can. All right. So mm-hmm. you're coaching. You're coaching. But I want to talk to you about the coaching. Remember where we left off in the next segment and getting these kids to the league and so forth. What is it that you do that's different from the coaching arena, in your opinion, that sets you apart from the others? Well, being an independent coach, I'm able to work with like kids. Like I got a couple kids at UConn. I'm working with kids locally. I'm able to kind of set my own program and I can actually, you know, say, you know, if a kid has an injury, hey, you're not going to participate today. So I'm not going to just keep pushing you and and letting you mess your body up and and just trying to get you on film. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to advocate for this kid and teach him how to take care of himself. So a lot of a lot of things that when you work for a program, you can't take care of your players because you got a head coach or you got a defensive coordinator that just wants them out there or just wants them out there getting reps. And you don't get a chance to make those decisions for yourself and, and advocate for those kids that maybe shouldn't be out there on the field because they're dealing with something. So here's a question that I don't know how many people either A, have the nerve to ask or the gonads to ask, if you know what I mean. Out of the NIL money that's sitting out there for these student athletes, how, let's put it this way, do you think that we know it may be possible, but do you believe off the record that maybe some coaches will push certain players because the players would maybe give a little bit of that NIL money back to the helping hands that's helping them. And maybe the coaches may push them towards certain teams in the league. Do you think that's possible? Well, the money, money is the root of all evil. So, you know, I I think everything's possible when you start talking about big money you know, corruption is going to always be there and you're always going to see, see people willing and dealing and making back backhanded deals. So, uh, you know, that's just always what it's going to be. Yeah. And that's a lot of people don't talk about that. But I think that with certain schools, when they have these enormous budgets, I believe they already have a compromised system in the first place. Look, I'm a fair play kind of guy. Look, I don't care who you are what color you are, where you come from, I don't give a damn. The best player should be there, period. And not because a school has an inside track to a particular team in the NFL or some garbage like that. I believe that you should be there if you belong there. And that name, image, and likeness money is only used to give, in some cases, extra attention to certain players so they can get themselves into the league, maybe push that product back again. So maybe it's from school X. We'll just call it school X or school Z. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but maybe the coaches at this particular school have an inside track to a particular team, right? So you could see how the money flow could be circular. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, coaching is incestuous anyway, and you know all the nepotism you see. It's always somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's cousin, and they and all the same guys get fired and hired in the same circles and and. It's just kind of like this this mad circle of, of nepotism that's been going on. And so, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. You're going to see stuff like that because, you know, these people are, you know, you, you hire my grandson, he's going to pay me down the road or he'll buy my daughter or something. 
And, you know, that's how they watch the money and move it around and keep everybody in these little jobs and just shuffle them out. Yeah, see, to shuffle me, deck whenever they have to. Dwayne, I have a problem with the idea that why, why should this coach's son and this coach's grandson or some crap like that, why should they all get jobs when you've got people out there that are very well deserving? Now, whether they played or not, in some cases, may be a question because some players will say, well, wait, they never put on a jock strap. How do they know what it's like to get hit? I totally get that. And I support that idea. But just because you're a coach's son or daughter or whatever the hell it is, why should you be put ahead of everybody else that has played in the game and or brings a crap load of experience? This is America, and NFL is the biggest, richest, most powerful business in the world, so that's how they've always done it. You know, I hire your granddaddy, your granddaddy's going to hire his nephew, his nephew's going to hire his cousin, and so on and so forth, because they want to keep this all in the family. That's how they keep the money basically encapsulated so that, you know, other people can't get opportunities to make those big dollars. Well, and take that same idea about the coaching as it moves through the family chain. And then you have that coaching, the tree that gets bigger and bigger. But it seems like it's the same people, the same families that keep getting richer and richer and the same teams over and over. Because there's a cluster of teams, in my opinion, that seem to have those coaches that come from the family chain. And somehow, magically, those teams get richer and richer. Then you look at the Bengals and say, well, geez, we only have four guys in the Hall of Fame. What the hell's going on here? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, they got monopolies. And, you know, it's real, you know. This is the, the NFL is probably a, a great example of all the ills that can go wrong when you got the most richest people in the world running running one company. So you, you already know there's going to be some shady stuff going on. OK, so the average fan that goes to a game will pay a lot of money. Let's say a family of four. Maybe it's going to cost to go to a National Football League game. It might cost a couple thousand dollars Four tickets, souvenirs, parking everything out the door. It might cost up to a couple thousand bucks. I think that's a pretty fair statement, right? Oh, yeah. And and the for the most part, look, I grew up broke as hell. My old man drove a truck. There was eight kids in our house. You know the story. We all have those stories, right? Anyway, yeah. the reality is we went to baseball games because they were cheap. We'd go to the night games on off nights. And so we were able to get in real cheap. So we couldn't afford to go to football games. But let me ask you this. We think of what the players are paid. They're paid, but they're paid, whatever but is there any way where we can make it more affordable for the fans to be able to physically go in and watch these games? Now, I understand the, the importance of TV contracts, right? Well, that's what the TV is for. But there's a different experience if you're a kid going into a game than watching it on television. It's very different. So is it reasonable to assume that certain players, or let's just say the, the league, has a base base salary, whatever that is, some huge number, I don't even know. But they're incentivized, their their performance would drive up their annual pay. Is that a fair or unfair thing to consider? I mean, it's fair to consider, but I know there's some markets that have cheap tickets like out here. Unfortunately, I get to go to, to the the Washington football teams games to go watch my Chiefs, and you can get tickets for like forty bucks. Really? Because <laughs> they're such a because they're such a horrible organization. But, you know, obviously, if I was in Kansas City, that same ticket would be probably 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, th there are some organizations that don't have, you know, a great following and you can get cheap seats. And, you know, I mean, I think some of the nosebleed seats, you can still get probably 60, 70 bucks in most stadiums if you're way up there in the upper tiers. But, you know, I don't I don't see them lowering their ticket prices no time soon. And, and like you said, you still got to pay for parking. You still, you know, by the time you buy, you're going to spend two or three hundred bucks. Well, you know, just parking alone. Oh, yeah, I think you hit your mute button on accident. Parking alone, in many cases, is a couple of hundred dollars. I mean, in L.A., you can't park for less than 200 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's unbelievable. Like my car got to pay 200 bucks. <laughs> right, and the car didn't even go into the stadium. That's unbelievable. That is, well, something that deserves a, an astounding chorus of boos. <laughs> I just don't understand that because everything, Show me the money! right? It, it's all about the money, the money, the money. And I just want to see the fans actually get something because let's face it, without the fans, without the TV audience, whatever, there is no advertising. There's no marketing money. There's, there's really no audience whatsoever, right? So without no. those people, what do you have? It'll be an empty stadium.
It'd be but I don't think these owners yet. gonna be lowering their prices no time soon. So I wouldn't hold my breath waiting on that. Yeah, right. Well, I, I, I 100% agree. There's you're not gonna see the prices really lower. What they will do in our last minute of the segment here, what they will do is they will lower the cost in some cases for some concession, right? So you'll see maybe okay. the alcohol prices go down. Well, what if you don't drink? What about the hot dogs? What what about the food? And in fact, in the next segment, I want to talk about food because you're in the nutrition business. Let's talk about food in the stadiums because when I go, the only thing I see are hot dogs, pizza, hamburgers, that's it. Nothing with any kind of remote health in their mind, right? Let's liquor them up, let's put a brick in their belly, and let's hopefully see them back here again next week. Certainly not the case, right? Absolutely. But there are levels to this because, you know, I know in Kansas City we got, depending on where you're in the stadium, there's one level where it's nothing but – filet mignon and shrimp and <laughs> lobster tails and, and you're eating you're eating carb you know some of the, the good stuff all right folks but we're yeah, gonna be back it, here it, we're gonna be back here with Dwayne. we're talking food we're talking nutrition we're talking football and who the hell else knows what's gonna happen don't go anywhere lots more to come here on the circus folks don't go anywhere <laughs> And that's what happens at the concession. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That belly bomb. It reminds me of that commercial, the belly bomb. Uh-huh. Have you seen that? 70,000 people with their belly bomb. Oh, man. I mean, I, I like going to the games and I like eating the food sometimes, but I, a lot of it depends on, yeah, like you said, where you're sitting, but I want something. I want some variety. That's, that's the one yeah. thing, like, so... When you go to baseball games, for example, in Chicago, you'll get some of the local food, which is great for me, which I just went back home and I gained nine pounds in eight days, nine pounds in eight days. Young man. I'm not a big guy. I mean, I'm six one. I, I was up to 225. I'm down to about 180. Well, before the trip, I'm hovering around 180 right now. What's that? You better go get a colonic. Buddy, I'm. Man, I mean, the food, I ate pizza six times out of eight days. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's the pizza count. And, no work, and no workouts, huh? Hell no. All I did, I, I walked a little bit. And then just to make matters worse, I went to the candy convention for three days. Oh, God. <laughs> three days of nothing but toothache material. And I, I love candy. And of course. Well, at least. At least you didn't end up in a diabetic coma. Buddy, I got some great things from the Pez company. Oh, boy, the Pez. Okay. Look, at it's a cupcake Pez. Here's something you probably oh, never sweet. seen. Ch- trip on this. Look at this. So it's the Harry Potter one, whatever. I don't, I don't collect these, but look. It's mystery Pez. Look at the question oh, marks. Oh, wow. Yeah. And these I've are- never seen that, so you're going to keep those forever, huh? And, well, I've got a whole bucket full of Pez in the other room, but yeah. I mean, these are things that you just don't see. And I even got, of course, because I was in Chicago, they have a pizza Pez. Pizza Pez, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, buddy, that, I got to tell you, I love stuff like this. I'm such a kid, I can't help it. I've, I've never grown up. I, I can't imagine growing up. Mm. I, I don't know what I would want to do if I grew up. <laughs> right? Why what do you want to do for a living? I don't know. That's funny stuff. All right, we're coming back in about 30 seconds. Yeah, the candy convention was fun, though. I go to that every year. I've been going to that for about 15 years. But oh, well, I, never, I never knew there was a candy convention. Yeah, it's called Sweets and Snacks. Next year is going to be in Indianapolis, so the next year, right here in Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to come get some peanut butter. I got a bag of it in the other room. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I can't bring it out right see, now. I'm, but... I'm, a, I'm a C's candy guy. All right, here we go. I love C's candy. All right, here we go. Uppercutshops.com. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, Double AMP TV. Folks, make sure you check out the SportsCircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows in full with no editing outside of certain things. We can't have bad language in there. Of course, those can be found on all your favorite podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, you name it. We're there. You can't get away from us. Also, make sure you check out the partners page. Lots of good partners on there. One of those, of course, is the SportsCircus.com's friend right here in Las Vegas, the College of Southern Nevada Athletics, CSNCoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. Lots of great Major League Baseball players come out of the College of Southern Nevada right here in the greater Las Vegas area. Great stuff. Check them out at CSNCoyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. All right, welcome back to everybody. TV, radio, the streaming, YouTube. Thanks for joining us as well. Here it's great Dwayne Clemens. Large human, knocked quarterbacks down, did like hitting Tom Brady and a couple of others. And, you know, in the last segment, we started talking a little bit about bricks and bellies and food. What do you think about stadium oh, yeah. food? What do I think about what food? Stadium food. Oh, man, it's not good for you unless you're in the good section of the stadium. Like, I love being in the suites because that's where they bring the good stuff. That's where you get your petite filet medallions and your lobster tails and maybe some shrimp skewers. But other than that, you net processed cheese nachos, and I don't know what those hot dogs are made out of. But I will say this. In Kansas City, we eat in the parking lot. So I tell you what, if you go out there and see some of those spreads, I have seen some of the most amazing setups you've ever seen, from from butts to, to – I forgot what they call those things the, – um, the briskets and all that, man. They got anything you could ever imagine grilling out there. I've seen ostrich out there on a the grill. I've, I've seen every kind of animal in the world. I've seen alligator. Um, there's, there's nothing you can't get. So I don't know about the stadium, but you can eat better in the parking lot, at least you know, in Kansas City. A lot of people have told me that. I've never been to a game there. There's a lot of stadiums that I haven't been to, but I guess I haven't also been to some of these with the right people that know where all the great food is. So maybe one Kansas of these City, days. You don't have to even be, yeah. all, all you have to do is walk around. People will give you food. You don't have to even ask. People will just give, give away food all day. That's great stuff. But of yeah, course, uh, but Dwayne, when you go to Kansas City, what do you think about? First thing that comes to my head, barbecue. Barbecue. Oh, yeah. Come on. Got to have some barbecue. Give me some pulled pork. Give me some big old ribs. I'll take a slab of baby backs. I'll take some brisket. Yes, sir. I'll take all that. But you got to go to Jack Stack Fiorella's. That's that's the, that's a staple. My my personal favorite is they used to call it Oklahoma Joe's, but now they call it KC Joe's since it's in Kansas City. Um, then Gates, of course, is the traditional. You got they got the best sauce. And they've been forever. I love Arthur Bryant's. Uh, there's a couple other ones. De- Nieces, that's another good spot. That's a mom and pop spot. But man, yeah, you can't go wrong with barbecue in Kansas City. What about KC Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce? Oh, yeah, yeah. They make, the sauce is there, but I'm trying to think. I don't think there's a KC Masterpiece barbecue place. I know they got the, the sauce. They used to have one in suburban Chicago, and it was in the western suburbs, and that was one of my favorite places to go to, and they closed it down probably about a solid 10, 15 years ago. But, boy, was that good. That was mm. at, at that time, that was one of the better barbecue places I went to. And here's a little-known fact. Well, actually, here, let me ask you a question. Do you know what the biggest barbecue in the world is? The biggest event? No. Oh, come on. You're killing you. It is the Super Bowl of Swine over in Memphis. Oh, come on. You got to know this. The Super Bowl oh, of Swine. Oh, come on, man. And then the I'm second. I'm man. I don't eat ribs every day. <laughs> I don't, hey, I don't either. I, but I love them. But the second biggest barbecue in the world, this is why I mentioned this thing in Chicagoland, is mm. called the Rib Fest. The Rib Fest, I got to tell you, man, this this is only a little bit smaller than the Super Bowl of Swine, but imagine a half a million people with award-winning barbecue contest, and you've got 30 or 40 of the best barbecue organizations in the world, the best sauces, the best grillers, the best everything. And it is something, they always hold it right around the 4th of July weekend. It is something special because they have to compete with the big Taste of Chicago. And, and up in yeah. Milwaukee, they have the big Summerfest, the biggest concert in the world. There's 700 musical acts up there at, in, yeah. in a 10-day stretch, whatever. But the Naperville Rib Fest is something I have, 
I got to tell you, man, I look forward to that every year. Like people like going to the Kentucky Derby. I like going to the Rib Fest because I love barbecue. Yeah, I'm about to get up there. Oh, man, it is something special. It really is. And they, they literally have organizations from around the world competing. I, I get nothing for saying this. Hell, they didn't even throw me any free ribs or anything, but that's okay. Maybe I'll get some mm. burnt ends this time. But the reality is we think of great food, great venues, and certain stadiums have it. But in your opinion, out of all the stadiums that you've been to, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, whatever, where's the best food so I can put that on my list? Mm. Now, don't alienate some of the teams that you played with because, you know, they might get a little bit bent out of shape. Oh, come on, man. You got to plug us. You know, I'm, I'm going to say it's a, it's a, it's a de definite toss-up. The Vikings' new stadium – they had some food venues. I don't know if you've been to the new Viking Stadium. It is a masterpiece. They had some great venues in there, and I think I, I think I had some like Chilean sea bass or something. It was like delicious. And then uh, obviously Kansas City, like I said, they got a couple of levels in there where you can go get your lobster tails and your skewers and all that good stuff. So I'm a, I'm a rock with those two, KC and, and Minneapolis. What are the top three worst ones that you've been to? Ooh, probably Washington. Football club, Baltimore. Stadium's pretty raggedy. Um, trying to think what else is there. Oh well, it's, I don't even know if it's there anymore. Yeah, and they they tore they tore it down. It's the um, the old the old Synergy Field, the old Cincinnati Stadium. I remember the, going to that place. That was a dump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen. I I know there are certain stadiums that have better locker rooms than others. I could do this one with you all day, but. Oh, Philadelphia, the old uh, – God, what was the one in Philadelphia? The old – That's man the vet. The vet, yes. That was a dump. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And, and that's how I feel about it too. <laughs> and you know what? But worse, worse the, the fans. These are, these are the same fans that booed Santa Claus, right? They threw yeah. snowballs at Santa Claus and crap like that. <clears throat> they threw bottles at an old man with, with two little kids. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? Everything. And, you know, when you ask somebody what's wrong with you, sometimes they say, I don't know, right? But the reality is when you have a collective of 50, 80,000 people in one place that share a commonality that they don't know what's wrong with them, and then you translate that to bad food because the food doesn't matter. They'll just eat like machines anyway. It doesn't matter what you feed them. Just give them carbs oh, yeah. and they'll be happy. Oh, yeah. Well, you see they're going to burn down their city no matter what. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Win or lose. But, you know, the, the best thing about Philadelphia in recent times, we don't like to timestamp these because we want to be able to play this again. The, the one right. thing about Philadelphia <clears throat> is that this is the team that's lost more professional sports games than any other city in the history of professional sports. <laughs> and I love Ooh. the fact that recently, it, it was about a year ago, they lost the possibility of two world championships, yes, in a span of two hours. Now, a nice round of applause, of course, for the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, that's right. Right, because they couldn't win a World Series. They couldn't win the other, which I, I think it was soccer or something. All I know is it doesn't matter. But they blew it twice in one night. <laughs> fly, he goes flat. I, I like that. I, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> all, all I know is those guys, they can get there, but they can't finish the deal. In my opinion, look, I, I went to... Ooh. I went to the, um, the Super Bowl up there in Minnesota, right? You remember that one? Oh, and, yeah. And these were the most obnoxious fans I have ever seen in my life. And I thought Ohio State fans were bad, but these guys take it, and ladies, take it to a whole different level. And I just, Oh, yeah. What do they do for a living? And everyone says, oh, the black hole's bad. Well, you know, it's funny. The Raiders fans, actually, a lot of those black hole Raiders people, they're actually professional suit and tie people, whatever – Ladies wear dresses. I mean, they're they're actual professionals. Believe it or not. Oh yeah. Yeah. So what do you what do you think is the deal with Philadelphia and their crap ass fans? I don't know what's wrong with those people. I know I would never go to that stadium and watch a game. I, I don't even I don't understand how the NFL even allows that to be part of the brand. Like to me, you know, I'd be like, you have to clean up your stadium. You ain't gonna have no attendance there. But because I feel like anybody from any team should be able to come to a stadium and, and be able to expect to reasonably leave it there in one piece. Right. Well, you know, they do have a jail there in their stadium. But, you know, they have a jail and a court. 
here in Las Vegas, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> uh, There's yeah. a jail in the stadium? Yeah, we got a jail and a court. You could be you could be incarcerated and processed and shipped out right there at, from the stadium, believe it or not. Sweet. I know. I like it. That's efficient. Yeah. So they, they don't want to keep the tourists here all weekend. And at least they make it efficient. <laughs> right. Leave your Go to the casino, spend your money, and get the hell out of town because we don't want all your nonsense here. You're going to go to the Super Bowl, or you're going to, well, we have Super Bowl coming up, right? Whatever. The point is, you're mm-hmm. going to go to a football game and then you're going to make a mockery of yourself. And you're probably going to injure somebody. So just get out of town, if you know what I mean. All right? Absolutely. I'm looking to come, I'm looking forward to my Chiefs being in Vegas for the Super Bowl. Just- all right, we'll see where that one goes. By the way, listen, we've got about a, maybe a minute and a half left in the segment. I want you to tell everybody about your business, about your nutritional side, and anything else. And go ahead, you got the floor right now. All right, so as a player, I broke my pelvis, tore my knee up, so I got into kinesiology, ended up studying to be a spinal decompression practitioner. Been doing that the last 20 years. So I mainly help people with backs and necks. That's my specialty, but I work on pretty much everything, knees, hips, ankles, as well as personal training. Um, I work with the Purple Flip company on nutrition. They do a lot of CMOS gels. They do fresh press juices, um, tonics, um, all the good stuff that your body needs to detoxify, as well as give your body the maximum nutrition it can it actually can put in itself. Um, we were talking earlier about this concept of H3O. When you drink fresh press juices, it's not H2O, it's H3O because the, the fluid is so much more powerful and it's so much, it has a profound effect on how you feel, how you, you know, how, how it cleans your body out, even makes you smell better. When you start drinking these kind of stuff, it like detoxifies your skin, makes you, makes you less uh, musty and, and funky and you just find yourself feeling better. Maybe that's why. I smell like cookies. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Maybe that's from the candy convention. I don't know. But anyway, Dwayne, always a pleasure to have you on the show. And we're going to have to bring you back. Bring some of your friends with. And you know what? Next time you come back, maybe bring something for the company. I want want to see something. Wear a t-shirt for the company. I know you got the NFL alumni shirt. Definitely. Of course, I don't have anything behind me here today. Well, you got plenty behind you, just nothing for the company. You got all your all your swag from your clubs, but a pleasure having you on. And listen, you're always welcome back here on the circus and hopefully you had a good time and we had a good time with you. I did, Sal. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, folks, that's Dwayne Clemens. And folks, we're going to be back here in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until next time, and everybody watching and everybody that's going to watch it later on, thanks for joining us here on the Sports Circus and we'll see you soon. So long, everyone. the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com <laughs>